Brain Chip Just Cure Paralysis Michel Ricardsey never imagined he'd be able to walk again, let alone ride, swim, or kayak. But unfortunately, his spinal cord was damaged in a tragic motorcycle accident in 2017, which left him immobilized from the waist down. Despite this, he took his first step outside with the help of a walker on a chilly, snowy day in Lausanne, Switzerland, in December of last year. His support came from a new spinal cord implant that sends information from his head to his lower muscles, hopping over damaged sections to help him regain mobility. One day of the stimulus was all it needed. Hello, tech nerds! Welcome back to AI Future Life, a versatile YouTube channel where we bring the latest updates on stock, science, finance, artificial intelligence, and many more important things. Before we proceed to our topic, subscribe to our channel and keep following us by clicking the bell icon. So, without further delay, let's get straight into the subject. Michelle participates in a larger research project using a revolutionary personalized spinal cord implant. Dr. Gregoire Cortin and colleagues at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne created the first implant that directly replicates electrical impulses from the brain to control lower body movement. According to a study published in the Medicine Journal of New England, the ability comes from an experimental implanted device that decodes messages in the man's brain that govern his emotions. Unlike previous spinal cord stimulators, the implanted electrodes are put directly into the spinal cord, allowing access to specific neurons that control lower body muscle groups. The implants may be customized to assist a specific activity, such as standing, walking, swimming, or biking, using a tablet that allows patients to trigger their spinal cord neurons like piano keys. It worked perfectly. Within months, Michelle and two other men with complete paralysis were able to navigate the streets of Lausanne in a Segway-like walker. Subscribe if you wish to stay on top of all AI news, forecasts, and the technological world. Make sure to like us and encourage us so we keep you up to speed on AI news. Make sure all of your alerts or notifications are turned on. Cortine has passed spinal cord stimulation experience. Nevertheless, his team surprised the field in 2018 with a stimulator that allowed a paraplegic guy to get up and take a stride. According to a longtime partner and neurosurgeon, Joseline prevents data transport by blocking the telephone connections between the brain and muscle groups, which are disrupted in spinal cord injuries. In the absence of intact neurons, muscles lack the guidance to convert tension movement into real coordinated muscular contractions. The injury also caused chronic paralysis by removing sensation. However, unlike the banks of a collapsed bridge, the brain infrastructure underlying the afflicted area remains essentially unchanged. By artificially stimulating these nerve cells, it may be possible to recreate the electrical impulses that govern human muscles. According to the authors, three decades of research have proven that stimulation can help people walk again after spinal cord injuries. However, these are still proofs of concepts that have struggled to restore paralyzed people's standard motor capabilities or assist in rehabilitation. The researchers set out to accomplish both, starting with an existing stimulator often used to treat chronic pain for the study published in Nature Medicine, but they rapidly hit a snag. Despite their extensive testing, the stimulators were not sufficiently selective, so instead, scientists changed the electrode leads. They designed paddles with 16 electrodes targeting specific spinal cord parts that control leg and lower trunk motions. Another issue was deciding where the electrodes should be placed. By examining the spinal cord and nerve cells of 27 healthy volunteers, the researchers generated an average spinal cord. They next utilized a computer modeling program called sim for life to design, to design electrode placements that would optimally stimulate essential nerve targets for lower body motion. Then there was the problem with the program. The researchers objected to the customer, but a much easier norm of continuous stimulation since the pattern deviates from genuine neurobiological signals. So instead, they created a range of stimulus patterns to assist them with various activities. According to a previous study, various activities recruit different bundles of nerve fibers from the dorsal root of the spinal cord. These ensembles, such as cooking recipes, can then be used to activate a variety of motor recipes. It is possible to duplicate the neurobiology of movement by altering the timing and sequencing of inputs after the original biological hardware has been destroyed. Doctors connected the implant to a Medtronic device within the abdomen after putting it at the lower back and tailbone. The FDA-approved device is usually used for deep brain stimulation, but it was adopted for this use to allow users to regulate motivation at their leisure. For example, individuals might pick from various stimulus patterns to induce movements, such as standing, walking, or swimming, using a tablet and a simple clicker. It just took an hour to put everything up. Within a day, the results were almost instantaneous. 
Three days later, the participants were able to take a few steps on the treadmill with bodyweight support on their own, and their gait had improved to the point that they could walk on conventional terrain with help. When asked to change their stride length, two out of three participants who had previously had no control over their legs could do so, suggesting that the device coupled their brains and intents with physical action. On the first day of stimulation alone, they took approximately 300 autonomous steps. According to the authors, performance improved significantly after five months. All three people could support their weight and regularly go about their daily lives. If they utilized a walker, they could easily walk for six minutes without assistance. Michelle could even climb stairs with only a little help. The participants were overjoyed at their newfound freedom, as the stimulator helped them improve their trunk position, commonly known as core strength and posture. The stimulation facilitated muscle repair, and all three men increased leg and trunk muscular mass. In addition, two of them were ultimately able to control some muscle movement even when not stimulated, while standing at a bar enjoying a drink or on a lake paddling a kayak. Although promising, the data are still preliminary. Dr. Jocelyn continues to imagine a library of electrodes to target spinal cord damage at multiple anatomical and injury levels while blocking a cooperating neurosurgeon. According to Dr. Reggie Edgerton, a top specialist in the field, the technique is unique. It combines cutting-edge implants with neurobiology and a splash of intuition and inventiveness. As a result, it provides folks who have suffered spinal cord damage reason to be hopeful. Chiang's group previously developed a method for detecting brain signals associated with the urge to utter specific sentences. According to testing, the procedure worked for those who could still move and speak. But according to Chong, success was far from guaranteed in someone like Bravo 1. After Bravo 1 reliably formed words on a computer screen, next the scientists began composing sentences to help improve accuracy. The researchers developed an algorithm that looked at each word's context as presented. According to Krishna Chenoy, a professor at Stanford University's engineering department, a device that can decode words in the brain might aid thousands of patients who have had a stroke or a severe brain injury. According to Chenoy, a device like this might help people with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, a crippling disease that eventually makes communication impossible. The researchers quickly identified that the subject's usual movements were not completely recovered. Moreover, their stride remained uncomfortable even with the practice since the implant requires spinal cord surgery. This technically challenging procedure limits the number of experienced neurosurgeons and can be pricey. Because different motor programs require different stimulation algorithms, the team is already thinking about the following stages, allowing people to control the implant directly from a smartwatch or phone. The team is also developing novel stimulation formulas with the help of artificial intelligence and cloud computing. On the other hand, Michelle is having a great time and is glad to be back in the United States after nine months in Lausanne. He stated that I'd undergone quite rigorous training in the last several months, and I've set myself many goals. But it's the fact that he sees the transformation every day that gets him the most emotional. So what are your thoughts on this novel technique of treating a problem? Do you feel that this has a wide range of applications and might honestly treat thousands of individuals who are now paralyzed for life? Please share your views in our comment zone below. We'd love to hear what you have to say on the subject. With that being said, we have reached the end of this video. Hope you liked this video. If yes, then please press the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update. We'll see you in the next one. Until then, peace.